and welcome to Animation Tribe, your guide to the many worlds of animation. I, of course, am your humble host, Stu, and with me, as always, are... Lish! And... Da -da -da. That's right. And do you like animated films from around the world? Do you like cartoons? If so, we are here to help you. Like, subscribe, share these videos for more animation amazingness. We talk about it all from everywhere, from Japan to America to England to wherever. Your source, here. And for this month, the first of many reviews, we are talking about the month of dreams. That's right, Dream Month. We'll be focusing on reviews that deal with the dream world, the sublime, the imaginative. And to do that, we're going to kick it off with a review of a film that is by far, I think, the most uh, inspired and the most uh, dream dreamlike that we can get. And that, of course, is... Nightmare on Elm Street. No, it is Little Nemo. Oh, oh. Little Nemo. What kind of dream will you dream, Little Nemo? What kind of dream will be yours tonight? For those of you who are new to the triad, let me explain. We're going to discuss our thoughts and summarize the film. We will also be looking at the troubled history of the production of this film. And uh, stay tuned for a very special announcement at the end. So, remember, this is a review you don't want to miss. So, to summarize Little Nemo, we are going to turn to a reputable source, IMVD. Woo! And it says, and I quote, A young boy whose dreams transcend reality is sucked into his own fantasy, which is everything he dreamed of, until he unleashes a centuries-old secret that may not only destroy this perfect dream world, but reality itself. That sounds a lot more interesting than the actual yeah. film, though. Yeah, I want to see that movie. Yeah, uh, it's... Yeah. If that uh, doesn't really summarize it very well at all, does it? It gets the job done, right. sort of. Yeah. I mean, the kid does get sucked into his dreams. Yeah. He mm -hmm. does do a thing that alters the course of the entire kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then nothing else really happens, kind of. It's very hard to explain what happens in that regards, because you're not sure if it actually does have consequences other than what happens in Dreamland. Yeah. Slumberland, as they call it. So, debatable whether or not it would actually affect the real world. Right. So, let's talk about that a little yeah, bit, shall we? let's. The film basically starts with a dream sequence of Little Nemo flying, right. which yeah. is one of my favorite scenes, and you just gotta yeah. see this. I love that scene. It is both beautiful and creepy at the same time, and I just love it to death. I wish more of the movie could have been like that, in terms of the action and just the wonder going on with it. But not so much, unfortunately. It, it was beautiful. Some of the physics kind of bothered me a little bit. Which part? The flying bed? Yeah, well, not the flying bed itself, okay? I get it. Beds fly in... in TV sometimes. Right. Yes, okay. Yes. That I can suspend disbelief on. Mm -hmm. right. You know, if I could travel by bed, life would be so much easier. But instead, no, it, it's later on when there's like some kind of chase scene going on. I don't care if it's a flying bed, it's not going to maneuver that easily. I mean, maybe it's it was not a going to turn bed. that precise. And it would have yeah. to be one of those car beds from Little Type then. Right, exactly. Yeah, just imagine if you had one of those. Yeah. If only it had the wheels, I could have believed that. Right. But possibly. I could have believed that, but it was just your standard wooden four poster. Mm hmm. But what you fail to realize is DREAM LOGIC! Dream logic is flying bed. Dream logic doesn't account for faulty engineering in like the turning of a bed. But yes, post your thoughts below. Do you think the bed was illogically made? Do you think it didn't fit the Just right aerodynamics? Turns, we turns. want to know. We hit you with these hard-hitting questions and we want answers. 
Do you? Post below to find out more. Yes, please. So then we move on to the, him waking up from the dream. Yeah. The first of many of oh. moments of him waking up constantly. Oh. And he then runs outside to see a circus. And we will see a bunch of familiar faces. In fact, just take a look. Yeah, it's just like that, pretty much. Um, that's gonna happen. Big kind of, oh, shall we say, Oz moment there. But it wasn't a dream. It was a place. And you, and you, and you, and you were there. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. So that works out. And then, of course, we then have him going to bed. And then we have the dirigible scene. I gotta admit, that was kind of a cool scene. Uh, when you had the nightmare show up. That's a neat scene. That really was. But they didn't really do much else with it. It just kind of like, nightmare! Like, you could have done something a little bit more imaginative, like make it a horse or something. I know that's kind of what they did in End of the Guardians. It was uh, an underrated film with flaws. I will say it has some flaws, that one. I think Nightmare would have been humorous. That would have been good. I would have, I thought that would have been really cool if they'd had like a, a whole roaming pack of like Nightmare horses mm -hmm. in, in the clouds and stuff. That would have been really cool to see. Not what we saw per se, but still pretty neat. And then we are introduced to Slumberland itself. And if you know anything about the comics, you should know that, wow, they cut out a lot right there. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. what they did add is noteworthy, though. I mean, the characters, for example. Yes, the character wow. we are first introduced to, uh, well, Little Nemo is first introduced right, right. to, would be uh, <laughs> Professor Genius. Yes. Yeah, let's talk about the other characters. We'll talk about Nemo in a I minute. do yeah. like how he introduced himself. I am a professor. I am a genius. You can call me Professor Genius. He's very right. humble. I am mean, indeed. All. We are then introduced to Flip. You're Flip. You're a frightful <sighs> fellow. You got it. I'm frightfully funny, frightfully friendly, and I can make your dreams come true. Fucking mm. flip. Yeah. Voiced by the Mickey Rooney. Yes, and that, I mean, that was kind of cool. I'm like, oh, hey, it's an actor I know. But that I expected when he arrived mm -hmm. in the movie that, yes, okay, he was going to be a scoundrel, but he was yeah. going to make some grand turnaround. He didn't. He didn't. There was no. no growth and development to this character whatsoever. He remained the same kind of sell out, throw him under the bus kind of dude that yeah. he's always been. You know, still wanting to corrupt people and do bad things. Yeah. And yet they're all still friends and right. everybody's okay with this. I guess so. I think he was kind of given a pardon towards the end just because he helped, quote yeah. unquote. Kinda. But. He was trying to help his damn self. He Pretty wasn't much. trying to help anyone yeah. else. There's more to his character in the actual comics. But... So we are then introduced to uh, King Morpheus. He wasn't initially introduced as a king, though. He was mentioned. Yeah, it was he mentioned. was mentioned, but our first our first encounter, encounter with, him with him is basically it's not that he's a, a king, but that uh, well, he's yeah. playing with toy trains. Uh, 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 a big uh, it's it's Santa Claus, folks. Thanks. King Morpheus in this movie is basically Santa Claus. We meet uh, the princess after we meet Morpheus, yeah. uh, or Morphe, as he likes yes. to be called. And that just makes me think of makeup. And why has uh, Little Nemo been brought to Slumberland? Well, to be the princess's playmate and potential heir to the throne of Slumberland. Playmate? Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But why are they bringing in some nobody when they have a perfectly good heir right in front of them? I mean, Morpheus has... A child. He has an heir. He has a princess. Mm -hmm. She can be queen. She can rule Slumberland. Instead, they're like, no, no. Let's let's just pick out a boy at random. You're gonna be our king now because what? She has a clan. They have a very interesting system of government. I think it's runoff lottery. A lotterocracy. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like. Yeah. Oh wait. That was a pun. So as you know, the pun gun. 
It was clever, but... Ah! Safe again! You're good this time. <laughs> this time. Next time! Okay, so then we have the princess herself, who... Yes. She's not all for him hanging out with her either, it seemed. No. 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 no, which was very understandable. Of course, when you consider how he explained his feelings on girls earlier... This princess is a girl? But I've never played with a girl. A girl? Well, she's a princess. Doesn't matter. She's still a girl. But what about the present? Present? Boy, I love presents. Thanks. I love the princess. I love girls. Yeah, he's a very progressive guy. <laughs> very progressive. That's probably the most personality I saw from her all throughout the film was when she was being kind of a crab apple to him. <clears throat> <clears throat> what? Nothing, really. It's just that no one has ever accepted a royal invitation in his underwear. And at first, I'm like, why is she being so mean to him? Like, it, yeah, it was said him. that she was yeah. requesting his presence, and then right. she's treating mm -hmm. him like that. And so I'm like, okay, is she just used to having people wait on her? Is she trying to play, like, excuse the uh, expression, but big man on campus? Like, is she trying to do a power play here? Or is she just teasing him and he can't handle it? I think it's she's teasing him and he can't handle it. Oh, so fresh. Especially with how things towards the end of the film. Mm. I think it was um, kind of a, uh, I'm teasing you because I like you type yeah. deal. Which isn't always the best thing to do, but it's what shows up a lot in animated series and cartoons. It, it can work if that's your true personality and that's how you want to relate to somebody else. Mm -hmm. but it just don't be something that you're not. If that's what she really is mm -hmm. and he can take it, great. True. Yeah. So after this, we have a little montage of them um, playing around and enjoying the weird wonders of uh, Umberland with wonderful music. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that happened. But yes. Uh, then, right before the ceremony, to be crowned prince, Lil Nemo and Flip run off with the key to slumberland that opens every door they do and uh didn't he much convince no him, did didn't and, uh, little nemo when we meet him he's not known for his willpower no. i'll tell you that much um uh, basically it, it took uh flip going hey here's the forbidden door that the king expressly said not for you to open and it's like i don't know flip come on okay Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Not and exactly then the apocalypse. So, yeah, the apocalypse. Right. Yay! It, it's the nothingness it, or the uh, heartless come out to play. Yeah. They unleash the nightmare king. some good animation. That actually was really cool. That was. I have to say yeah. the that little black cloud is like my favorite mm -hmm. animation of the whole movie. Oh, yeah. it was fantastic. And then... I mean, the physics were great. <laughs> 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 so then, of course, Lil Nemo wakes up. Then he, we realize he's not asleep and he's not awake yet. So he wait, goes back to bed, kind of, and wakes up and discovers that... Professor Genius is now floating in an ocean out of nowhere. Yeah. No yes. explanation. Yeah. So they get back to Slumberland. Flip's been put in uh, to a cannonball to be shot to the moon. Yes, and let's actually talk about that for mm -hmm. a second. Flip was put into a cannonball because, yes, he encouraged Nemo to open the door. Yeah. Now, Nemo actually opened the door, but Flip encouraged it. So when they're like, who opened the door? Like, nobody wanted to say who it was. And Nemo's like, no, but but Flip. And Flip's like, I didn't do it. He shoved that kid right under the right. fucking bus. Yep. He's like, it wasn't me, it was him. And it's like, okay, you know what, though? It actually kind of was, though. Right. Why? And, I mean, I think that becomes important later in the film. It becomes right. the only, in my opinion, deep thing about this film. Mm. 
was the kid learning to take responsibility, responsibility right. for his own actions? But at the same time, Drink responsibly. Indeed. But at the same time, Flip himself is getting the blame because, as far as anyone else knows, he is the one who did it. They don't know. They think he stole the key. So, yeah. there is that. Yeah. Um, so, but Flip spare, gets himself safe because he has a map to Nightmare Land. Why does he have a map to Nightmare Land? Because the plot says so. That's right. why. Because he's a drug dealer. Yeah. I could see that. I think he is, because he's like, hey, kid, hey, kid, hey, kid. That's we assume that that's actually yes. how he was introduced, yeah. basically. Yeah. Almost. He's basically. We assume his cigar is like, tobacco, but mm, yeah. Basically, a drug dealer. Only he deals in like druggy maps. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Like I here's mean, a map to the drugs. Find hey, you want to take a trip? Hey. Ah! hey, that's a good one. Okay, we're yeah. not going to shoot you for that one. Though. Okay. <laughs> so, they then decide to go on an expedition to go save King Morpheus from the Nightmare King in yes, Nightmareland, and. You know, being a princess and all, you think you'd have a fleet of uh, of, of the royal navy, the right. guards, which you see everywhere, and they had a huge bloody cannon. So obviously they have warships and stuff, right? Nope. Nope. <laughs> it's a little paddle boat. Yep. Which gets destroyed in a matter of seconds. Right. That's okay. He brought an old man and mm -hmm. a little girl, and Flip. So. And he is also a little boy. I'm yes. Like, yeah. I know. Yep. Yay! <laughs> and they are uh, in Nightmare Land, right. and the map Their is slimy gone. slimy things trying to grab them. Yeah. Yes, pretty much. The map is, is gone, or, or so the authorities would have you believe, because mm. Flip is like, yeah, we're going the right way. Flip right. was a dirty fucking liar. Damn straight he was. He actually, pop, he actually pimps off to try and redraw the map from memory, is what we're assuming he was trying to do, not making up like, from whole, whole cloth. Right. And that's when they meet the little goblins who <laughs> Here, I fell down. I, we must have scared him to sleep. Oh, they were so cute though. The, the good goblins. Yeah, the good goblins. These actually were pretty good goblins and they were kind of amusing. I, I liked them as yeah. a kid. I kind of wanted them to sing though. They kind of did, didn't but they? I, I yeah. wanted them to like start popping their heads off and like throwing them and like Oh, I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Labyrinth. Tangent time. Sorry. Any I'm movie can be in, any any movie can be in, improved with the inclusion of David Bowie. This is what the Pants. film is missing. In David Pants. Bowie. And Give me David Bowie in, in those little pants. You remind me of the babe. Huh? Babe. Babe with the power. What power? Power of voodoo. Who do? You do. Remind me of the babe. Dance magic dance. Damn straight. And I can't go on any more tangents. No more tangents for you, my dear. Good luck with that. Yep. I'm a rebel. I And then we have, well, there's no other way to put this, but uh, rejects from Oz. The flying monkeys come in and steal everyone. Right. Yeah, that kiss came out of nowhere. Um, and then there was that evil flying manta ray. I don't know if they called it they anything. They never called it anything. It was just yeah. kind of flying around, getting people yeah. spying on them. Yeah. Right. And then Little Nemo wakes up again, and then we have the iconic scene of the walking bed. Yeah. You know the scene. Because he ran out of You might, ones. if you've seen the film. Yeah. You also might know it from any other use of, like, dreams. This is one of the most referenced scenes from Little Nemo. Either that or the flying bed scene. Uh, this has shown up in uh, quite a few things. In Miss Kobayashi's uh, Dragon Maid, the anime, the end scene, the end song for that anime has references to uh, Little Nemo in it with flying beds. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kids Next Door had an entire episode where the oh. beds had, were walking and stuff like that from Little Nemo. So there are a lot of references to this in other animated films and stuff and series. So, everyone is captured except for Little Nemo and a couple of the goblins, and he encounters the Nightmare King, who is by far one of the best parts of this film. Mm, that voice, though. Yes, yes, this voice. But mm. it's not the first time we've heard him, either. We've heard the voice of the Nightmare King in The Point. He yes, was the have? rock man. That's right. Yes, we have! We then have a little standoff with uh, the Nightmare King, who I gotta say, I love his lines. It's yes. just, just, just watch. Just, just. Pajama, pajama! 
Pajamas do scare me so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he cracks me up. He's so fun. I wish he'd been in more of it. He kind of made the movie. He really did. Honest. And the whole the squirrel. Really, the squirrel? Yeah, a little, a little bit. Uh, the squirrel. I got a thing against animal sidekicks for All the right, most part. All right, tell us more. About use up some of your coins. All right, man. sure. All right, I'll go on a little tangent. I'm not a big fan of animal sidekicks for the most part in like animated movies because it's always they always feel the need to shoehorn in an animal sidekick who usually acts like a dog for the most part because it's like any sidekick animal is basically a dog. I like some of them, but for the most part, not the biggest fan of it. I just was like, yeah, I, I didn't feel it was necessary. It was something they added for the movie, and it was just chip 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 chip. That's all it was really. I I get that. So it, That's valid. Also, if you're having a I dream like it world... no one else had any personality, so at least he enough. did. But here's the thing. You, you have a dream world, and then you have reality. And in reality, Nemo apparently has a squirrel which understands him perfectly, and he understands it perfectly, and has little flying goggles. You mean you don't? Not as of right now. Oh, now... Basically, he saves the day with chanting the spell the right way for the first time because it's a ridiculously long phrase to fire off the scepter. Pajamas. Pajama, 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 pub, whatever. Something, something, I ended up stinking drunk from it, okay? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. And then it basically ends with everything is right, Nightmare King is destroyed, <laughs> everyone goes back to Slumberland, and um, he and the princess fly back in the dirigible back to his house. Flip basically says, I'm not smoking anymore, yeah. and Nemo leans in for a kiss with the princess, and he wakes up. Oh, and denied! Then, denied. But his dad does take him to the circus. Oh. That's that's an excellent consolation prize for an unmet boner. Yeah. Damn straight. Or, as you could call this, Little Nemo and his disappointing wet dream. You know what, though? That thing with the staff did actually kind of make me wonder for a minute if there was some Freudian shit going on there. Yeah. You know what? Maybe that should be a discussion we have eventually. But what I'd really love to hear about more, actually, is the history of this movie. Stu was actually talking about some really awesome stuff. Indeed. Mm -hmm. And now, as we promised, we will be discussing the sordid history of the making of Little Nemo. Oh. Get your tea ready. In slumberland. Get so, basically, this film actually started in 1977 when the producer went to get the permission from uh, McKay's heirs to make the film. He originally approached George Lucas, who turned it down, and then he approached Chuck Jones, the legendary animator behind Looney Tunes, who also said, Not today, Satan. Pretty Not much. Not today. And he then went on to a plethora of other people who worked on this project. Allow me to drop a few names, if I will. We had Hayao Miyazaki, who, in his own words, described it as the worst experience of his life. Okay, wow, now, the movie was just alright for me. It wasn't, like, the worst. Maybe no. the people behind the scenes sucked? Oh, there's more. Be the people suck? Is that what was going on? I think it was a case of too many cooks in the kitchen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the biggest problem that George Lucas had is the uh -huh. same problem that uh, Miyazaki had. Uh -huh. The fact that they felt that there was no character development for Little Nemo. Right? Yeah. yeah. What I say, his biggest thing was, wowee, that's it. Yeah. Oh, oh, but you know what? He did at least actually learn to take right. ownership of his actions. That, but that's it. That's yeah. it. Also, Miyazaki didn't like the fact that uh, basically it means the entire film was just in in a dream. He didn't like that. Which I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, this the... It's overdone. It is overdone. If you go through this entire plot point, and then the only thing that happens after that is it was all a dream. Like, right. that's amateur writing? Yeah, I don't like that either, so I can understand <laughs> that. Also, some of the people who worked on the writing staff were Ray Bradbury. What? Yeah, he worked on a script which was eventually thrown out. And you know who else worked on it? The comic book writer and artist Mobius. Behind Incal, behind that l amazing segment in in heavy metal, this guy is is a legend in comic books. He worked on this, and they 
didn't go with it. Not this, today, Satan. Pretty Not much. Today. And then, the screenplay was worked on by Chris Columbus, the guy who did the first two Harry Potter movies. Oh, this film was a mess being worked on. So, the film itself came out in 1989 and was made by the production company TMS Studios. Hmm. Now, if that name rings a bell, and it should if you're a child of the 90s, because they worked on Batman the Animated Series and Animaniacs. Oh, wow. Yes! You want to know why they did those? To recoup their loss from this movie. This blew a $35 million hole in their budget, and they only made back 11000 That is quite a gap. Yes. And, and based on the clip that you showed us for a trailer, was yes, it? Yes, there was it a was pilot. Very, it was yeah. a very different movie mm -hmm. than yeah. what made it to final production. We're going to show you a small clip from the unreleased until recently, clip of the original production that Miyazaki worked on. Ready? Take off! So that was a clip of it, and quite frankly, I think the art stands up a bit better to some degree. I loved yeah. it. But we should have reviewed that movie. That that in itself felt more like true to the comics yeah. than this movie did. That felt true, and if I'm being honest, the faces were a little prettier. Yeah. I'm sorry mm -hmm. to be so shallow, but the proportions on the face were just right. better for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so this had a very troubled history. Uh, there, of course, was the tie-in game, uh, Little Nemo uh, Dream Master, mm -hmm. which, yeah, this was actually a yeah. really good game. Yeah. yeah. But, truth be told, an interesting thing about this film is technically it's not a Western animated film. It is actually a Japanese-American production, mostly in Japan. Oh. So, this is an anime film, technically, and was one of the first widely released anime films to be shown in theaters in America. Mm. So, there's a little bit of trivia for you, dropping a little yes. knowledge on you. So would you call it's it an Anna... Maybe. Maybe. Oh. You know what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of bad. We're pushing your luck with that one. Darn it! What ah. the fuck? I know. Jeez. It's like... We're, we're not get. We're, you're going to get it next time. You are. You are going to get it. <laughs> you're blessed. You're lucky apparently. today. But with that, Check I think it's us. time to move on to our final thoughts. Uh, what did you think of it, Lish? Well, my final thoughts uh, was that it wasn't terrible... But the truth is, for what they were trying to do, they probably could have achieved it in less time, or they could have added more substantial content within the time frame. Uh, the animation, while I had issues with the physics, while I had issues with some of the facial proportions, mm -hmm. I still thought it was beautiful. It had almost a Don Bluth quality. I could see that. Almost. Which was nice, it was comforting, it was pretty. Um, I liked that at least one character got some character development, and that was Nemo, learning how to take responsibility for his actions. Um, but overall, it's not something I would watch again. Um, it's probably not even something that I would think to recommend to a friend. It's not that I hated the movie or anything. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. It was just... Me? It was just meh. Mm. Teddy? Um, I, I kind of feel the same way Lish does. I would say, redeeming quality, if you have a kid, or, you know, you're babysitting a little a little one, it would entertain them, I think, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I think they'd get bored and ask you to play with them. Depends on the kid. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but, um, I, get, I didn't hate it. I, it's, it didn't wow me. It didn't wow we me. <laughs> well, that just leaves me then. Well, obviously I'm in the minority because I own a DVD copy of it. 
And if you couldn't tell, from, I actually am a very big fan of Little Nemo. I saw this film when I was very young. It actually came out the year I was born. And I loved it. I watched the VHS to the point I think it fell apart. And I admit, going back as an adult, it doesn't hold up as well as I thought it would. And there are a lot of faults with it. But at the same time, I enjoy it. But I would use it as an introduction to Little Nemo, and then maybe move on to the actual comics and stuff. It is a film and a comic that has a place in history of animation and I think it should be recognized as such. Is it a great film? No. Can it be enjoyable? At times, yes. And the history behind it, I think, is fascinating, as if you couldn't tell from us discussing it. And we hope you've enjoyed our take on it. We really do. And to move on, we have a very important announcement, which we hinted at earlier. And I think I'll leave this announcement up to our good friend Lish. Hi! So I'm Lish of Lish and Us, and obviously Animation Triad. But the thing is, I'm going to be taking a break for a little while. It's nothing to do with these guys. Love them to pieces. Maybe a little too much sometimes. We love you too. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's just that I have acquired a new job that is taking up a lot of my time. So there's an adjustment period. And I don't have the kind of time I'd like to be able to commit to this project anymore. But I hope that you will still continue to support these wonderful gentlemen here and whoever they bring on board. Uh, and please also be sure to subscribe to my channel, Lish Ness, where I do makeup reviews, tutorials, get ready with me. And there may actually be a collaboration coming soon between myself and Animation Triad. <laughs> so please be sure to stay tuned on this channel and also mine for that. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this with you. It's been a pleasure. We Thank wouldn't you. have it any other way. And we I love you. Hope someday I can come back. Cuddle puddle. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. Seriously. We love you too. So I'll sit over here. Stay yeah. tuned for more amazing videos coming out this month in the month of dreams. I'm your host, Stu, and with me, as always, Teddy D. And Lish. For Eventually. the time being, we await her return. Yes. Thank and you. join us next time for when we review Moon Dreamers. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to this channel, mm -hmm. leave a comment below and tell us what you thought, if you agree with our assessments, if you found us informative and helpful, and of course, share with your friends. And if you don't have any friends, then random strangers on the street. We'll be your friends. Contact us. Post comments below. We'll be friends with you. Why not? Why not? <laughs> All right. And, and share with random strangers on the street, because that's how these people grow. That's right. It's how we grow. <laughs> that's how we do it. So, yeah. until next time, we are Animation, Animation Triad. Triad! Awkward finger guns. <laughs>